Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 2, Episode 27. We're spooking right along with our Trick or Trash Month, and today we got Demonic Toys from 1992, directed by Peter Manoogian. I'm Joel Scola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Wooden Soldier McGraw. Welcome to the dumpster. I mean, this is Halloween. Isn't that when all the creepy things are supposed to stock the earth? It deals with demons. Demon resurrection and those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. Halloween! Have you forgotten? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat. I didn't know what I was going to enter the show with until that very moment. And you entered with the the, the weirdest fucking part of this film. Um, it's my favorite part of this movie. How dare you? He's pretty wonderful. He's a little sweetheart, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. Stepped right out of March of the Wooden Soldiers. This movie was like, okay, for a minute. And I was like, okay, this is all right. And then that happened. I was like, now I love this movie. <laughs> uh, man, I think this is our first official Full moon joint we're doing today. Prehysteria 3 was not official? No, no, no. That's Moonbeam. Ah. So that's the kids' version of Full Moon. This is a full on fucking Charles Band ass Full Moon. <laughs> this is a Charles Band gore laden weird creature effects movie. Yeah, yeah. About the about the gore in this movie. Um, so I had avoided this because I, I don't like Puppet Master. What? Ah! Oh, get, okay, you're kicked off the show. Goodbye. The first two are great, man. Give them a shot. I can't do pint-sized peril. It just doesn't do anything for me. It's the same thing with Child's Play. It's like, I can't take your threat seriously. Oh, man. This, however, I was really into this for some fucking reason. H have you seen Puppet Master? I've seen the first one and just uh, didn't appeal to me. Hold the fucking phone, man. The fucking dolls in Puppet Master and Child's Play are way more threatening than the fucking toys in this film. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not even the toys this movie. It's when this movie starts dropping ludicrous deep lore on me. I was like, there is so much going on in this fucking movie that I was not ready for at all. Um, yeah, because guess who we have writing this film? Oh my fucking God, I couldn't believe that shit when I read it. David Goyer <laughs> wrote the screenplay for this film. <laughs> David She-Hulk is only there to fuck the Hulk Goyer. Oh. <laughs> I fucking forgot he said that. You've never, Joe, you've never heard that David Goyer soundbite? No, I have not. David Goyer got on stage in front of a bunch of comic book fans and tried telling everybody that the She-Hulk is stupid because she only exists to have sex with the Hulk, not even knowing that she's his cousin and her origin is completely, <laughs> has nothing to do with the Hulk. Is... Is he a fucking idiot? He is an idiot. Yes, he's an idiot. <laughs> but he wrote two of the best Batman movies ever. Yeah, he also wrote The Unborn. Love that movie. And other movies. Oh, you want to hear his, uh, he, he also wrote Death Warrant and Kickboxer 2. Oh, man, those are classic. Cl Kickboxer and The Unborn, those are classics, dude. Uh, he wrote Arcade. He wrote The Puppet Masters. Arcade is great. Uh, Crow, City of Angels. No, thanks. I like that movie. Dark City. Blade. Blade 2. I like both of them. Yeah, he has a hard drop-off coming right around. Blade Trinity. Oh, and there we oh, go. Oh, there it goes. There it is. There, yep. there's the <laughs> not going to read the rest. You get the picture. There's the hard drop-off right there. But then he wrote Batman Begins. In, so like what the fuck what a weird journey huh what did that's fucking creep that's weird well i think jonathan nolan assisted in writing all three batman movies mm. oh yeah yeah so i think there was someone there to be like hey why don't you calm it down a little bit hey i wrote this movie about killer toys one time he didn't have anybody on set telling him to write martha in the script a bunch of times <laughs> Also, we have John Carl Beekler doing all the to uh, the yes. killer kill killer toy designs in this film. Um, R.I.P. Yes, this year actually, back in March. Yeah, yeah, I had just met him too. He's one of my favorite um, effects artists 
ever. Well, he directed your fucking one of your favorite movies, Joe. Troll. Yeah. Yeah. He. Oh, he that's right. Th- he's the daddy of Troll, and it's just like th- th- how much work the man's done, and you don't even know he's done it, right? Yeah. Um. You know, he's did a he's done a, a, a Freddy and a Jason. Oh, he directed part seven, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he did. He, that's one of my favorite entries in the series because that's kind of before everything starts getting a little weird. I, part seven's weird, but like in good ways. Yeah. Yeah. He also had all these weird like. That's the movie that got just savaged by that one Paramount executive, and like all the cool shit he had planned was ruined. No, it was all shot. It's just cut, and we nobody's seen it yet. There is footage, but it's it's nigh unwatchable. It's, yeah, you get yeah. Also, Terry Kaiser's in that as well. Yes, he is. He gets killed with a with a weird like weed whacker kind of thing of a chick. <laughs> it's like a weed whacker with a fucking buzzsaw on it or something. Yeah, I was like, Whoa, what do you got to cut down with that? <laughs> so we got Beekler doing um. The, the designing all of the um, puppets, the, the killer, the killer toys in this film, and then fucking David Allen doing the the stop motion effects. Man, he is a. They're both full moon um, veterans, right? Uh, so D- David Allen's done like uh, he's done a bunch of stuff for the Puppet Master movies and like Robot Jocks and like pretty much. Every uh, laser blast, pretty much like everything. Holy shit! I know, I know, I know. Laser blast. Yeah, everything that Charles Bands like produced with stop motion in it. Until he passed away, David Allen had done, and he's like he's like one of the he's like he's like a modern day fucking Harryhausen dude. Like, yeah, Laser Blast, I think, is the first ever MS33K finale before it was resurrected. I don't know, but I know they did it. I think it is, and yeah, it had the weird talking lizards and that stupid blonde kid who goes in the desert and goes pow pow. Oh yeah, sure does, and the fucking <laughs> yeah, the lizard bounty hunters. Yeah, very critters esque. <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> I had some extra time after watching this movie because I, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, Mike Deke also worked on this. I don't know if you heard of this guy, Joe. Big effects guy for Full Moon. He was actually the guy in the fucking, uh, not going to spoil it, but the suit towards the end of the film. Oh, he was. Um, I, he's they were he was part of the 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 team. I, ah, geez, man, I'm gonna just punch myself in the face, but like I, I forget what the the studio was called like Beekler studio was called. Cause that's who did the film. Um, okay. Yeah. And it's, it's fun too. Cause like I, I watched my, my VHS copy of this and you know, and this is, this is a film that like I used to rent all, you know, I've said it a bunch of times on the show before, but like, this is one of those, you know, early nineties flicks that I'd rent all the fucking time when like, this is like heyday top tier full moon. Okay. And what was cool about full moon, uh, VHS tapes or the tapes at the time, the releases was that they would include like bonus, like behind the scene shit called Video Zone. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> funny you mentioned that. I actually watched an episode. Oh, you of did that on YouTube today <laughs> before we recorded. Oh man, that was the coolest part. Cause you you watch the whole movie and you're like, oh, that was that was you know, oh, I love that shot or I I love that effect and I love this and I love that. So then in the video zone, they go behind the scenes and they 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 you know like there's interviews with with Beekler and like yep. the the effects guys and like how they're doing all the stuff and the sculpts and the puppets and all the shit. It was it was so fucking cool, man. Like it, it was like a wet dream for me as a kid. I didn't know that was uh, on those VHSs and I must probably rented a bunch of those when I was a kid. But when you take it home and just like an A to Z video package, nothing on there is telling you like, hey after the feature there's all this extra stuff well there's usually a thing right in the beginning it'll be like uh after the sh- uh, stay tuned after the movie for full moon's video zone yeah but i was a dumb kid and just fast forwarded through some trailers <laughs> so like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i watched one today about this movie and in the beginning uh, charles band he's kind of like explaining all the movies they're working on he's all hyped about him yeah and then they gave like a 15 minute fucking behind the scenes of uh demonic toys interviewing cast members going behind the scenes on the effects talking to beekler so cool. Uh, it's fucking cool, man. Yeah. Um, also, Connor is notorious for n- shutting a movie off right when the credits roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe that's why you never saw it. <laughs> okay, tape's over, done. Eject. He didn't see Kaminsky eating that fucking candy bar at the end of uh, Upworld, man. <laughs> You didn't see the Super Koopa Brothers either. No, yeah. god damn it. No, I didn't. And I'm not sure if I uh, if I feel better not having seen it or, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad as missing out on Cybo, man. No. I'm still 
I'm I'm furious that like you guys got like what is essentially like an extra half of a movie in that fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> and this is coming from the guy that I've listened to old episodes of our show where Connor is the one constantly dropping fucking Lawnmower Man references in the older episodes. I know. <laughs> and then I sit down. I'm like, here we go. Time for Lawnmower Man. And I'm like, this must be the director's cut. <laughs> He wanted it so bad and didn't see the actual, yeah, like, even... the director's cut. <laughs> I didn't get to see a whole sequence with monkeys and comic books and armed men. And... <laughs> God. You did play the video game, though, so I guess good for you, question mark. Man, I <laughs> wish I could do an entire video essay in that video game, <laughs> but I'll never finish it because it's hard as fuck and impossible to finish. So, uh, so yeah, the plot of this is pretty pretty straightforward um there is a woman who is a cop who is pregnant who um gets trapped inside an old toy warehouse with a um criminal she is chasing and one of the other criminals gets shot and bleeds on a, on the on the floor of this toy toy warehouse and release it's very it's very hellraiser setup and yes and releases a demon <laughs> Uncle Frank's there. <laughs> I'm back. Come here, Judith. I want to grab your boobs. He, he pops out. He's like, I didn't die here. What is this? Uh, wasn't there a mattress or something? Oh, wait, that's part two. What's the toys <laughs> doing here? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, he, he dies on the, on the floor. He just happens to crawl into this fucking uh, pentagram and dies. And his blood... From his gunshot wound, resurrects a demon that's been dormant underneath this toy warehouse for 66 years. <laughs> and Of course. Yeah, and um, so the lady police officer, the criminal who's still alive, the security guard, a fried chicken delivery guy, and, an, and a runaway get caught in this warehouse and have to fend off evil toys controlled by this demon. Demonic toys, if you will. Yes, oh, excuse me, demonic toys, TM. Um... <laughs> Because this demon needs to be reborn, right? Apparently. We'll get to it. That's his goal. Even though he seems kind of fine the way, <laughs> the way he is. Oh, he's fine. He's drinking wine. He's fucking kicking it in a fucking little playhouse. He's going through a cornfield. He's... <laughs> We'll get to it. That you know that joke will make uh, sense in a few minutes. Now, this one's a little on the outside here because... Oh, wait, does Mr. Boogity take place on Halloween? Uh, it's a Halloween movie. It's all, yeah, I know. All right, well, we usually, do, so for Trick or Trash, I mean, if you guys haven't listened last year, you know, we usually try to do films that take place on Halloween. Now, <laughs> this film doesn't take place on Halloween, but there is a sequence in the film that does take place on Halloween. That totally takes place on Halloween. <laughs> Is is if yeah if it's if it's directly referencing Halloween and its story then you know I mean it's got Medea boo a Halloween story beat or whatever the fuck that was called yeah. <laughs> well there are demons in it there's killers the people die there's gore you, you mean you mean there's actual stakes and not like a, a a heinous prank played on children by a bunch of full grown adults oh my god imagine if fucking uh 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 Tyler Perry came out at the end of this movie was like gotcha stepped out at the end of it he's like I hope I hope you all learned something. <laughs> So all those people didn't die. Oh no, they're dead. They're dead. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an eldritch horror. I'm, I'm here to consume your flesh. <laughs> Tyler Perry is a fucking eldritch horror, isn't he? <laughs> Somebody put him back in the fucking box. God, I'm n now I'm just imagining a film that will never happen. But Medea vs. Demonic Toys is something I need to see. Oh man, her, her, her and fucking Pam. <laughs> Aunt B. Aunt Bam. Was it Bam? Bam. Yeah, Bam, Bam, yeah, Bam. Man. Dude, one fucking punch to that fucking Jack in the Box toy. It's out from Tyler Perry. He's like six foot five. Yeah. 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 Unless it bites him in the dick or something, right? Bites him in the fake boob. Maybe. This movie <laughs> is, uh, I don't want to say it's the culmination of the MDU because we've had a few of those already, but it's, uh, it opens with a staggering MDU reference. Sig Valtzen's in the fucking corner. Let's be real. Uh-oh. <laughs> the time realm? We open up on this fucking room of this woman, uh... Tracy Scoggins. Yeah, Tracy Scoggins, in this fucking room full of clocks. With these two small children. <laughs> yes. It's the, it's the other part of the room we didn't get to see. Yeah. Yes. So, Tracy Scoggins is playing Judith Gray, and she's hanging out in Sig Volson's time realm. You know what else is funny? This is the MDU merging with the FMU, the full moon universe. <laughs> Because sure, before we before we really get into this, there is a sequel to this film 
Then there is another full moon property called Dollman, and there was a Dollman versus Demonic Toys. Oh, never mind. I didn't know about this part of the equation. Yep. And then there was Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys for Sci Fi Channel, which we won't talk about that film because <laughs> it's fucking heinous. My goodness. And then eventually they actually did Demonic Toys 2, like way after. Yeah, I, I mentioned Demonic Toys 2 first, and which is the canonical sequel to this one. But that came, like, way later, which actually is a decent film. Okay. is it? It's kind of like almost like what they did with Sleepaway Camp, where it's like, we have two and three, but four is actually two. E- well, yeah, pretty much. Almost like we were, we were talking before the show started a little bit about Terminator with this dark fate coming out and how it's like, how did Connor put it? He said, uh... It's the fourth Terminator 3. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking true, though. First, there was Terminator 3, and there was Sarah Connor Chronicles, and there was Salvation, and there's Genesis, and now we've got Dark Fate. Or, or, if you want to, you can count Terminator the 3D Experience as Terminator 2.5 and or 3. I would watch, I would watch Terminator 3D Experience over Genesis any fucking day of the week. Well, it's it's like half the runtime and less stupid, so. Oh, yeah, it was great. It's still good. I went, um, I don't know, five years ago. I just watched a, uh, a little, like, uh, like a, not only a documentary, but Mr. Sunday Movies covered it, and, like, that, that fucking thing cost $60 million to make. God, suck. I know. Doll Man, by the way, look that the fuck up. That is a movie and a half. I've never heard of Doll Man. Doll Man, this fucking guy's like a cop on a planet in a different galaxy, and he's chasing this fucking head. This guy who's literally a head in a fucking spacecraft through the through a fucking wormhole and lands on Earth, and uh, uh oh, on Earth he's only twelve inches tall. Yep, he's fuck. It's Tim Thomerson, man, the the man of the uh, Transfers franchise. Yes. Okay, so now I'm now I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently he fights demonic toys at some point. He fights demonic toys at some point. So that's the thing, like Dollman versus demonic toys is just like oh the the I can't really remember it. I've only seen it a handful of times because it's not. It, I don't remember it being that great. But like demonic toys two is like a direct sequel to this one, and it's like oh the you know the demon brought the toys back or whatever, and then then there's like a another new toy that that has a demon in it or some shit that like resurrects them or or something that kind of reminds me of how like 30 years afterwards like ravager came out uh well not like 30s after the fourth one but a long time after the fourth one ravager came out and was pretty well received still haven't seen that one yet right neither i've only seen bits and pieces of it but it looks fascinating I, it's very interesting the production yeah and it was the last movie that anger scrim filled before he died so um Back in old clock world, <laughs> yes, we have Tracy sitting there with these two fucking kids. Her name's Judith Gray, by the way. Judith Gray, yeah. Uh, Judith's sitting there with these two kids, one blonde hair, one brown haired, and the, the fucking brown haired kid is Daniel Cerny, and he was like the main fucking kid in Children of the Corn 3, like a few years after this film. Oh, really? Oh, now that joke makes sense. Eli or some shit, I think his name was. Oh, uh, I don't remember 3 very much. I can't remember anything after one to tell you the truth, except like 666 Isaac's Return or whatever. Yeah. I've never seen anything past the first one. Ah, the first one's fun. I mean, well, fun's probably not the right word. <laughs> it's a, but it's I like a rip it. Rip-roaring good time. Oh, yeah. man, we should fucking do a, a, a Children of the Corn month? What do you think? Uh, uh, so as long as we bounce it out with a pumpkin head month. We're watch all <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> you fucker. I don't want to watch Ashes to Ashes ever again. <laughs> Blood Wings, I'll give it a pass. I, I don't even know which one that is. Blood Wings is two. And then like three and four came out back to back from Sci-Fi Channel. No fucking thank you. Yeah, I saw them on the same day. They're like, this is the world premiere of Pumpkinhead three and four. And I was psyched. I was a like, great Pumpkinhead. And it was like, nope, don't need this shit. But the original one is fucking fantastic. Oh, no, you did Robocop, the prime directive all over again. <laughs> you know what, Connor? We'll, uh, we'll workshop that idea and come back <laughs> around to it. You can just you can just forget I suggested it, honestly. I mean, I'm kind of with it just because. <laughs> Just to watch the first one and just tell you how much I love that compared to the other ones. <laughs> well, at least three more episodes is just us going, yep, the first one's great. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sean. Get this rolling. So, Judith, you know, apparently she has this dream. It's You find out it's a dream that she constantly keeps having. And the two kids are essentially playing a game of war, you know, the card game back and forth. And the blonde-haired kid, he says, I win. And then the the brunette kid says, no, I win. And then the blonde kid's like, you cheated. And then she wakes up. 
And she's a cop, like Joe was saying, and she's kind of out uh, on a stake with her partner. Who is um, Jeff Celentello, by the way. He's from Puppet Master 2. Um, that's the only other film I know him from, but I'm sure he's done a bunch of other full moon shit. Uh, they're, they're on a, they're on a, uh, a sting operation, actually. Yep, and this, uh, is here, the, the check, his name is Matt, I believe? Yeah. His name is, it's not gonna really matter in about five minutes. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's gonna live a long and <laughs> prosperous life. Everything he said was telegraphed to have him survive this movie and many more. I'm gonna be a dad, Jude. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy. You're pregnant? Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I mean, yay. She reveals to him that she's pregnant, and he is just so, like, fucking shocked. He doesn't know how to react. He's like, you want to get married? He's like, well, I figured we'd get married when we have kids. And I'm like, wait a minute. You're doing this backwards. And then he's, and she's like, well, I'm pregnant. And he's like, oh, great. That's fantastic. Now I have an excuse to marry you. He, like, opens up the car door with other free hand. He's, where are you going? Nowhere. Look at that. What's well, over there? Well, see you later. Yeah, they're also partners, right? So, yeah. man, what a... I got to tell you something. I don't know if I would become romantically entangled with somebody... Like, if I was a police officer... Like, another police officer, right? Right? Fuck no. I don't want to watch you get shot. Right? And then, like, do jobs with you. I feel like that's against some kind of ethics code. Not even ethics code, but, like, the risk... The, what is about to unfold here would be, like, my worst nightmare. Well, you know? yeah. right, yeah. It's, it's a conflict of interest, that, and it's like, yeah, it is... It's, it's If something terrible happens, it's like, f- I would quit. I would quit the my, force. Fuck yeah, that, but that's no like, way. My pregnant wife is, is, is in, like, the red... Of a chance to be shot. Right. Right yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, especially when you come to find out that they're they're there to fucking meet a couple of gun runners. Arms dealers. Oh, yeah. Arms dealers, air quotes. <laughs> like, these guys. <laughs> this is Uncle Frank. Lincoln reminds me of Uncle Frank. Oh, yeah. That is Uncle Frank. And then he's constantly, like, s- like sweaty and salty, and his hair's always wet, and he's always like... <laughs> Like he's a he's a good actor, dude. He's like he's like one of my favorite characters in this film. He's just, he looks like he's covered in like some kind of slimy film the whole time. He's a piece of dog shit, but like I just I think he's a good actor. So it's him and and this Gary Busey light. His name is Hess. Oh, I was calling him Harry Anderson. <laughs> I was calling him Charles Lee Ray. <laughs> Yeah, Charles Lee Ray, he goes into a fucking toy factory, <laughs> and he falls over when he's bleeding, and then some toy comes to life. I was also I was also for a minute calling him Tim Roth, because all he does in this movie is bleed. He's got bad blonde hair that starts in the middle of his head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, they're making, so they're making this gun deal, and um, what's his name, Matt? Yeah, Matt. Yeah, he gets, like, made immediately. Yeah, this guy's the worst undercover cop ever. This is the, okay. I, he's like, what, are you, you gonna show us something or what? Like, give me your guns. He's the dumbest cop I've ever seen. Not just because of how he handles the situation, because when it goes south, he has a comedic death. Why does he not have body armor on under his fucking shirt? Why, why, I guess, let's just get to it. Um. So this, <laughs> this, this fucking, because I gotta, this, uh, this gun deal like starts and it's like they're showing him like single action shotgun, <laughs> puts it back in the fucking trunk, um, and then the other one pulls out like this assault rifle and he's they they keep aiming it at Judith and he's like hey getting like emotionally like he's he's giving himself away no clip man yeah no clip man which is relevant for what's about to happen mm. um so Matt like doesn't even try to let this deal like. <laughs> Or this act, like, build. He's like, he's like, cool guns, you're under arrest. He's like, uh, how much? He's like, 40K for the lot. And he's like, he's like, what do you say? And he's like, uh, I say, you're under arrest. And he pulls out his gun. He pulls gun. out his gun. And then, like, Harry Anderson takes his fucking weapon that doesn't have any ammunition in it. And just goes, eh, and th- <laughs> throws it at Matt, who turns. He's like, jerk. And then blows a fucking hole in him. Puts a hole in him. In the unarmed, disarmed man, leaving himself wide open to be shot in the chest by Lincoln, the other criminal. <laughs> yeah, he pushes like he pushes Judith out of the way and then just fucking blows a hole in him. Yeah, it's like, dude, why didn't you shoot at the guy who had a gun trained on you that you knew had bullets? I do not know. He's like, hey, that. He's like, hey, that hurt. <laughs> well, then they fucking Lincoln and Hess run off, and you know, I guess Matt's just dead, like on impact, because he get, he's just bleeding from the heart. I think they shot him like right in the chest. So, oh yeah, yeah. he goes right down. He's yeah. dead immediately. So then uh, Judith, after a heartfelt moment, just rushes towards this fucking toy factory after the two criminals. Judith is dressed in nines, by the way. She's got this nice blue button down. Her earrings are in. <laughs> She's the worst cop. She's even worse than Matt is. <laughs> 
don't know. The way she's holding this gun kind of uh, pisses me off. Like, come on. Like, I don't know. She's got like her hand open, like her like the <laughs> the butt of the gun is in her palm and her palm is wide open and she's like I don't know, taking forever to, like, pursue Lincoln and Hess, like, into the toy uh, warehouse? It's an awfully drawn-out chase sequence. It takes forever. I'm just now processing this. I don't know. It it only hit me at this moment. But later on, there's a whole big kerfuffle about how they can't enter or leave this fucking place unless, like, the big fucking, uh, the, the, what do you want to call it? The shipping door opens. The ba- let's just call them the loading doors, yeah. So how the fuck did they even get in there? Well, he, uh, you see Lincoln, like, bust the fucking, or shoot the lock off the, um, the chain thing. You know how, like, you can pull the fucking, uh, metal grate thing down and lock it, like, over, like, a window or, like, a door? Sure. He busts, he shoots the lock off of that and opens it and then opens that door and that's how they get in. Uh, okay. And, Her- and Harry Anderson just, like, crawls afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I love this part though, like, he, like Lincoln's in the, in the, uh, Lincoln and Hess go into the warehouse and like, they're going up the stairs and, and Hess is like, I'm, f- I'm fucking shot, man. Lincoln, help me, man. And he's like, get the fuck off me. And he like kicks him <laughs> in the face and he like falls down the stairs. Fuck, fuck off, dead man. Yeah. He's like, sorry, buddy. Fuck you. You're dead weight now. So, and then, you know, Hess crawls over to the fucking spot in the floor with the cracks in it. And, like, this, like... This doesn't seem ominous to him at all. Like, this this light just materializes out of nowhere and hits this specific... <laughs> yeah! This blue light on this spot. This specific spot in the floor. He's like, huh, can't be worse than getting shot in the guts. Here's the, here's the thing. Like, he's dying. You think, like, he thinks it's, like, heaven? Maybe, maybe. And he's, like, crawling towards it? I wouldn't want heaven to greet me in a in a gross, abandoned toy shop in the <laughs> middle of the floor. Well, I mean, if that's where you die, that's where that happens, you know what I mean? Well, unfortunately, he doesn't die because... <laughs> well, no. <laughs> as you hinted at, his blood starts just getting all over this fucking crack in the floor. I want to say it right now, blood in this movie drips so loud. <laughs> you hear it every time it hits the floor. Oh, yeah. Um, this come this this is intercut with another scene. Do we want to just like go all the way through this and then cut to? Ah, uh, well, we can go to the other scene briefly. Okay. I want to talk about this fucking guy. Okay, so so right before fucking Hess releases the demon, we cut to the chunky chicken. <laughs> well, first we go to the fucking bartender from T two. Yes, <laughs> that's that fucking guy. I can't is let it... you take the man's wheels, son. And that's is it the same guy? Yeah, and he yep. takes a fucking shotgun from him. Uh, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah. This guy, Cherneski, he's like this uh, lazy-ass fucking security guard who's got Puppet Master 2 on in the fucking corner, and he's reading porno mags and just drinking a beer. With polka music playing over Puppet Master 2? Yeah. But he's also he's also only watching the same scene from Puppet Master 2 over and over again <laughs> every time we see him. It's the same scene where some girl's getting slashed by that little fucking hat-wearing, knife-wielding puppet whose name I don't know. Blade. Okay, then. There it is. <laughs> Well, the pisser is, meanwhile, while he's, like, farting around, like, uh, Judith catches up to Lincoln, and they're having kind of a bit of a gunfight in between, like, some shells, and he's, like, he stops for a minute and starts listening, and he's like, eh, nothing. Yeah, he's like, eh, nothing, takes a swig of his fucking scotch, watching fucking Charlie Spradling get fucking cut off by Blade. Yeah, he keeps pouring the scotch in his fucking coffee mug. It's probably that, it's probably that movie I can't hear over my polka music. <laughs> so here's the thing. This is Charnetsky the Brown, dude. He's hanging out with fucking Gunner. <laughs> oh my god. And he's like the kooky fucking, he's the kooky wizard. He's got dog, he's got bird shit in his head. Charnetsky the Brown. I fucking, I drink my fucking scotch and eat my fried chicken. I am happy with my lot in life. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on my ass, I watch TV, I'm fucking worthless. Charnetsky the Brown. I live in what's essentially a cave. <laughs> <laughs> the elder gods were gonna give Gunner that body, and he said, "Ah, no, give that to Brown." <laughs> yeah, what? dear God, you said spare tire on that guy. I won't be able to move anywhere. It can't be witchcraft, could it? Gunner, help me out here. Fucking Gunner gives him like a fucking cigar. He's like, "Here, take a puff on that for a second. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Charnetsky. Tell me about the evil toys. Oh no, you're dead. <laughs> Jump the gun a little there. <laughs> uh, so Charnetsky, he like Joe or Charnetsky, he calls in this fucking chicken order to the chunky chicken, 
And, and he's like, eh, ah, make sure you don't give me any of those wings, just legs and breasts. None of that wing shit. <laughs> For a second, I thought they said the Chokey Chicken. I was like, holy shit, it takes place in the Rocco's Modern Life universe. <laughs> <laughs> and give me extra honey for my roll. You assholes always skimp on that. And a chunky shake. And then... We're introduced to uh, Mark Wayne. Who fluctuates in appearance between, the, depending on what lighting there is, between, like I said, Michael Shannon, like Stephen Dorff. It's weird. Yeah, Bentley Mitchum, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Robert Mitchum's grandson. <laughs> I wonder if he knows... Uh, Shane Van Dyke? Yeah, I wonder if he knows Shane Van Dyke. I like him a lot better than Shane Van Dyke, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. He's a better actor. I, I got two things to say about this guy. One, he's probably my favorite character in the film. Two, he shouts every fucking line he has in this film like he's never acted before. He also never takes off that jacket. Do you blame him? No. <laughs> a cool jacket. Uh, but I think his acting's fine. Like, yeah, he's yelling, but, like, he's in a panic because of the situation he's in. Nah, but, like, yeah, I think yeah. I think it's, I, I don't know, I think it's fine. I don't disagree. I just wanted to point that out because there, there were a few times where I was like, all right, buddy, calm down. I don't have a problem with anyone's performance except for maybe... Uh, Tracy Scoggins, who gets a little kind of like really hammy at times. She gets dodgy, especially towards the end of the film. Yeah, but like, um, as far as her physical uh, presence goes, I feel like that woman could fuck my day up. Probably. She has arms that are cut like I've never seen. Like she's ridiculous looking. So we're at the we're at the chunky chicken place, and Charnetsky places his order, and uh, Mark's like filling it, and he's smoking a fucking cigarette like in the the fast food joint. Dude, he doesn't even have gloves on. He's grabbing this chicken with his. <laughs> Bare fucking hands. <laughs> He's grabbing it with his bare hands, throwing it in his fuck, throwing it in this fucking uh, container. And this and his like coworker work comes out. And he's like, "Hey, what are you doing? You fucking smoking a cigarette in it?" It sounds like Eddie Diesel. <laughs> God damn! Like I said, chunky shake. Wash it all down. I don't know why movies have this weird idea of what like retail and fast food management is like. They're not these weak willed, pencil necked assholes. They're these horrible, domineering shitheads who think they have all the power in the world. Like this fucking scene is so good because like Mark is like a like a like a shit kicker and working at this fucking uh, <laughs> uh, ch fried chicken place. And this dude comes out and he's like, uh, excuse me. He's like, is that a cigarette you're smoking, Mr. Wayne? And he's like, no, it's your dick. And he, <laughs> he fucking flicks the cigarette at him and he like takes his food. And this guy is such a fucking pushover. He's like, well, I'm just going to write this in my... I'm gonna write this on my clipboard. I don't, know. I don't I don't like your tone, mister. I'm just sitting here wondering how has this guy not been shit canned yet? That's what I'm saying. I this don't know. manager is is a complete pushover. Like I'd be fired like probably six months before this. Oh yeah. And he's like he's like, I'm going to bring Charnetsky's food, I'm making a delivery. And he's like, All right, well you come right back here, mister. And he's like, You know what? How about I take your fucking chicken mobile and drive it into the fucking river? And he's like, I only tolerate so much more of this, young man. Unacceptable. <laughs> I'm writing this down. And then he just fucks off. <laughs> he fucks off to the toy warehouse with the chicken. Yeah, we never never see these people again. <laughs> Mind you, when you say chicken mobile, just to paint a picture, it's basically like a fucking car with a giant ass chicken latched to the top of it. It looks like a giant peep is attached to the top of it. <laughs> a little bit. It looks like the choky chicken mobile. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so that's how he gets into the fucking picture. Cut back to the warehouse, and somehow... Judith has gotten into a fucking fist fight with Lincoln, and this guy is literally doing punching her in the kidneys. Yeah, but she beats the shit out of him. Well, yeah, he gets a couple kidney shots in, and then she just whips his ass and fucking handcuffs him to a shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's an awkward moment where he tears her sleeve off. Yeah, there's a lot of clothes ripping in this scene. She's ripping his shirt. She he rips her fucking sleeve off because now she looks like fucking Ripley or whatever. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, but while that's happening, I guess we cut back to our boy Hess. And, uh, guess what his blood's done? Yeah, he just won't die. But <laughs> He's fucking activating the demon of the toy warehouse. <laughs> they show all these fucking baby dolls in the corner, and the second you see this one baby doll that just looks a little disgruntled, <laughs> pre demifying I'm like, well... Yep, as soon as I saw it, I was like, well, that's gonna be important in a couple minutes. And wow, what a... What a fucking effect that toy is. They show them all. They show Baby Oopsie Daisy. Ro roll call. Ready? Uh, Baby Oopsie Daisy, Teddy, the robot, and Jack. Uh, Jack, whose uh, uh, voice performer was all in on this. <laughs> 
I'm with it. That guy is laughing up a fucking storm. Can we explain that a little bit more, though? I feel like that doesn't paint a really good picture because... Okay. Th- th- when you say robot, this fucking thing... I, I, they should have just used this goddamn thing. They should have had, like, 20 of these things. They would have decimated everybody. <laughs> this thing puts holes in people <laughs> the size of my fist. Oh, it shoots fucking lasers yeah. at people, and it, Like It thing. hits you, and it violently explodes on impact where it shoots you and takes a whole chunk out of you. I hate to correct you there, Connor, but those were actually squibs under the man's shirt. Very noticeable squibs. <laughs> the, the We're going to pause, let them explode, and then react squibs? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know what, I, I, I actually like that toy's design of it just shooting lasers, but I just thought that looked like shit. No, I think it's I think it's fine. I think I, I like it. It's very charming. It is the worst effect in the film, because I feel like every other effect in this movie is, like, legitimately great. Specifically, I was referring to one moment later on where he shoots somebody in the elbow, and, like, their elbow fucking pops. Oh, them. man, that looked brutal. But uh, this guy gets it from every uh, every toy who comes to life, takes a piece out of this guy. Just just to finish that point, so the, the robot is essentially on, like, uh a conveyor belt kind of feet so it just slides across the ground and it's like a tank yeah there you go and uh the the, the teddy bear is not just a fucking teddy bear it's grizzly teddy this thing has this fucking deformed demonic looking face with these massive sharp teeth well first he's like a regular looking bear and then he eats this oh, motherfucker's yeah, yeah. fingers off and then he like turns into demon bear and like rips his fucking bow tie off and he's all gross looking this is my favorite toy in the movie oh he's great especially because like none of these I wasn't expecting full-on performances from these toy characters because, like, Oopsie Daisy has, like, full dialogue and has quips. Yeah. The Jack in the Box has, like, a Joker-esque laugh, and the the Grizzly's always like, ha! <laughs> and the Jack in the Box, too, if you want to explain that. Uh, Yeah, so the Jack in the Box is a great character because, like, he's always laughing and shit, and he's got these razor-sharp teeth, but the cool thing about him is he's kind of like a fucking snake in this box, and he and he's got this tail that comes out and like shakes and he's got like a baby rattle on it. It's fucking great. So he's kind of like a rattlesnake. Yeah, I like that. Jack in the box monster. It's fucking amazing. I think they collectively destroy this man. Oh yeah. Baby Oopsie Daisy's there. Oh, by the way, is like a foul mouth deviant who has uh, a bottom jaw that is carved out of <laughs> is carved out of the bottom of her mouth where the toy is and her her bottom jaw not only opens and closes, but slides in and out, depending on her emotional range. It's very jarring and creepy looking. I mean, she threatens a man at one point by saying she shits her pants. Isn't that... Oh, no, it's not this guy. It's later on. Yeah, but she... It, I, does she talk in this scene, or is that later on? Well, I was just, you know, laying a little break crumb there. Yeah, fucking Linda Cook supplying the voice to Baby Oopsie Daisy, by the way, who's also the voice of Leech Woman. Ah. P.S. Connor, you gotta watch those first two fucking movies. Puppet Master, one and two. They're great. Also, R.I.P. Linda Cook. R.I.P. Didn't even know she was dead. Yeah, 2012. Ooh. I didn't know either. Until today. So we go back to Judith and Lincoln after this guy gets decimated, and as she's trying to leave this uh, area that she's in, the storage closet, essentially, the door shuts. So she's fucking stuck in there with this criminal that killed her fucking baby daddy. This is where I was like, we're never leaving this warehouse, are we? Okay, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I was feeling for this woman, honestly. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, because I would have put six bullets in this guy. Especially because he wouldn't shut the fuck up either. Oh, yeah. He's a real piece of shit, too. He's like, I, I fuck, I gave what good wood to your yeah. partner. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, lady. Cop, lady, bitch, whatever. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. He's an awfully brazen criminal for being handcuffed at gunpoint. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to be out on fucking bail by midnight. This whole fucking thing's entrapment, bitch. Yeah, yeah, fuck you, buddy. Yeah, you're done. I don't know why she just didn't fucking shoot his ass, honestly. And then take the cuffs off me like he came at me with a knife. I mean, he gets a good later, but this is pretty yeah. good. Um, So while she's in there, she's shouting and, you know, trying to make noise and nobody hears her. And then the uh, chicken guy shows up, and he brings it into Charneski, this fucking Chinese food-ass container of chicken. And he's, just, he's like, hey, kid, you want a beer? Yeah, okay. Throws him a beer. He's like, hey, get a look at this. He pulls out this fucking nudie mag <laughs> of this woman with these, like, red, white, and blue fucking, like, robe on and her tits and her vagina are all hanging out. It's Miss July. Yeah, he's like, hey, did you see Miss July? Here you go. He, well, he hands this magazine to Mark, but not until... It's important for later, let's not forget. 
Oh, yeah. But not until he brings it towards his face and, like, either licks it or sniffs it. I don't know what he's doing. And then hands it to Mark. I'm like, don't take that, please. Oh, you touched it. Like, <laughs> Ma- Yeah, but then Mark takes it and sniffs it. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? Scratch and sniff, Playboy? What the fuck? Scratch and sniff Mr. Lai's vagina. <laughs> that is a horrifying conception. I don't <laughs> Fucking Uncle Sam somewhere just like, I'm, I gotta eliminate it. Yeah, man, he had a copy of it in his fucking helicopter in Kuwait. <laughs> <laughs> She's insulting America. She's rubbing the boobs with the flag. He had to have something to get angry about for three years while he was stuck out there. Oh, okay, I'll write that one down. That's not right, but you can totally wear the American flag as boxer shorts. Yep, because there's a dick in there. <laughs> <laughs> America's dick, motherfucker. America only dicks can rub against the American flag. Only pure American wangerangs. Uh, w- oh my god, wangerangs. Wieners. Just makes me think of Donald Trump hugging a fucking American flag. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that just I notice it's not relevant, but the security guard keeps saying, "Oh, excuse me." I thought that's what he said. He just yawns. I'm going back to sleep after I drink my scotch. It's yeah. <laughs> He's, instead of saying, hold on, or wait a second, he says, hold your pants on. Hold your pants on. And he says it twice. I'm like, oh. Did he think Mark was going to strip down and start jacking it to this fucking picture? Yeah, hold my pants on? Like, what, do they tear away? Do I have to hold them on? Like, I think this is Peter Shrum's best performance ever. It has to be, right? I mean, it beats the T2 fucking bartender. It beats the T2 one, yeah. Can't let you take the man's wheel, son, but you can have Miss July all you want. Sniff it, baby. <laughs> Um, at this point, too, Judith just is like, fuck this. I'm just going to start firing my gun in hopes that somebody hears me. Oh, yeah, because be- before this, she, like, breaks the window and sees Mark pull up, and she's, like, yelling down at him. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and fucking Lincoln's like, you're a real fucking idiot, lady. <laughs> As he's just still covered in sweat and slime and whatever the hell else. Yeah, I mean, Mark doesn't hear him, obviously, and then that scene we just described happens. Anyway. So, yeah, so she starts firing the gun, and then Mark hears it, and he goes, oh, there's, there's a gunshot. And Chernasky goes like, eh, might be a cat. <laughs> you know, the cats in their gang wars. What is this, fucking Roger Rabbit? <laughs> the weasels are fucking up a cat in the warehouse. Ah, the weasels are outside just shooting at each other. It's fine. It happens every Tuesday. <laughs> Who's the wallflower? It's fine. They're tunes. They can take so much damage. Chernesky, cut the bullshit. Yeah, you got some dip or what? He's got some fucking French onion dip up there. <laughs> also, on a quick side note, I just looked up fucking Pete Shrum's uh, filmography, and he plays Santa <laughs> Claus in Trancers, so that's a thing. Oh my god, yes he does! <laughs> Dude, Jack Death just wastes fucking Santa Claus in this fucking mall. Poor Peter Shrum. He's in uh, it for like two seconds. Gonna have to watch that now. Oh man, let's do it, Trancers. I mean, he's getting punked there, he's getting punked by Gunner. He's getting punked by Arnold. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Gunner the White slapped him on the back and fucking left a, you know, kick me sign. A kick me sign? <laughs> he's like, oh, G- uh, Chernitsky the Brown, he's always there for me, except when I don't need him. Instead of kick me, just as fucking annihilate me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the demonic toys got that fucking message loud and clear, Connor. Yeah, the universe The universe is like, okay. Uh, okay, let's gotta not get carried away here because Chernitsky alerted Gunner to the presence of John Hurt. That's how this all happened. He, oh. you know, yeah, Gunner thought John Hurt was dead. The Dark Lord was done. Gone. And Charnetsky was like, I there's there's magic afoot. He brought toys back to life, gonna And then a bunch of characters who aren't in the story show up for an extended fight sequence. That literally <laughs> just fucking clicked in my head. I kept baiting you guys before and nobody took it. I saw that fucking movie once in theaters and I never saw it again, so bear oh, with no. me. Oh no. All right. I was like, cool, a Dark Souls boss fight. This is the dumb. only goddamn thing I remember from that movie is the fucking dragon getting killed and the random dwarves on top of fucking pigs or whatever the hell they were riding. <laughs> uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to secure Charnetsky the Brown's place in the MDU. I can pit, now I see it loud and clear. Loud and fucking clear. Okay. And Charnetsky, you know, let, you know, just to finish the fucking comparison, I guess the demonic toys are the giant spiders. Yes. Oh, yeah. Are, 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 the, are the Playboy magazines his woodland creatures that he has to tend to when they get sick? Exactly. And Mark is the hedgehog <laughs> that he saves. Okay. 
Okay. He's like, but he, he's instead of a crystal, he gives him a beer. Be, be like me, hedgehog. I sit on my ass, <laughs> I eat chicken, I read nudie magazines, I watch movies. Drives a fucking sled. Yeah, I drive a sled. That's the fucking life. Downtown, traffic is terrible. Literally. <laughs> I'm a department store Santa, and I bartend on the side. I keep getting tickets for riding a sled in the city. <laughs> you know, we just met you, Charnansky, but you seem like you're already fitting into the MDU really well. These are Rasta Bell rabbits, fuckface. It's almost time. The secret code is Charnetsky the Brown. Send us a direct message on Instagram for a chance to win this week's Trick or Trash giveaway. Again, the secret code is Charnetsky the Brown. And remember, kids, the clock is ticking. Don't miss it. Um, so, yeah, he, he, Charnetsky and fucking Mark, they go to check on these gunshots. And, you know, they, they, they find Judith and Lincoln in there. And, uh... I forget, does Judith or somebody hear something? So uh, Charnetsky goes to check it out. And this fucking teddy bear takes a baseball bat and fucks his knee up hardcore. Oh, yeah, pops it. Well, I want to I want to I want to I want to address one thing before this happens, because like he goes out to search and Judith is like, hey, you gotta handle that thing. He goes, yeah, I was in Korea in the back of my head. I'm like, yeah, you were probably there, like, you know, on vacation or something <laughs> like a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the revolver he's got in his hand. I know. I was in Korea. I was in Korea. I wasn't participating, <laughs> but I was certainly there. I put the Dark Lord away once. I can do it again, ma'am. Don't sass me. Okay. Uh, but yeah, and then he goes out and searches, and Grizzly has a fucking bat and kneecaps this son of a bitch right away. <laughs> Mark goes, ah, he tripped. He's <laughs> fucking drunk or something. Yeah, he's like, well, he is a little drunk. <laughs> He falls, he's looking for his gun, he gets up, he's like, what the fuck happened? Oh my god, this fucking part. And then we get our introduction to Baby Oopsie Daisy. Officially. Yeah, name dropping and everything. She's like, I'm Baby Oopsie Daisy, and fuck you. <laughs> you lard ass, will you be my special friend? <laughs> she just hurls a bunch of obscenities at this guy before she fucking attacks him. <laughs> she goes, the first words out of her mouth are, hi, you fat fuck. <laughs> Radagast is just fucking, you know, doing the sign of the cross, like, Christ, help me. <laughs> I'm praying to gods who I don't believe in who technically don't exist where I come from. <laughs> Gonna protect me. He's like, what? Gunner's just like looking at this scene above, like in the heavens, like with the Chicago Bears jacket on, like, nah, I'm good. He just like, he he has a newspaper in front of his eyes and he like kind of folds it down for a second and then just like puts it back in front of his face. Maybe next time, Cherneski. Well, you're going to have to become Charnetsky the Gray sooner or later. Here you go. Yeah, how do you how do you think you how do you think I ascended? Fuck face. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take one for the team. It's been twenty five years since I've interfered <laughs> with demonic toys. <laughs> yeah, get eaten by those to get eaten by those toys, you quitter. I had to I had to get eaten by mosquitoes, so you gotta get eaten by toys. So this fucking thing like picks up his gun and just fucking goes oopsie daisy or he, she goes play time and shoots him in the fucking leg. Yeah, and his kneecap explodes. It's awesome. <laughs> and Mark's like, oh my god, somebody shot him. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. And they're in, <laughs> they're in there and they're thinking that it's Hess out there. You know what I mean? Because they don't know he's dead yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dead. He's gone. Like he disappeared. Oh. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, he was. He got his fucking fingers bitten off, stabbed, shot with a fucking b laser. Um, yeah, D.E.D. -E Dude, has disappeared like a fucking Jedi after he got struck down. Yeah, he's just like a small puddle of blood. That's the last thing you see of him. So he falls down, and then Jack, the, the Jack in the Box, like, wraps around his neck, and the fucking teddy, this creepy teddy bear, like, crawls up his fucking chest and, like, starts biting his neck and his face. And the fucking Jack in the Box is biting his cheek and shit. I'm gonna say that if any one of those people came out of that storage closet and helped him, he would be alive right now. I don't know. Did the demon lock the door, though? No, because they opened it. No, Mark has the key. That's right, yeah. It was locked before, though. Right, yeah. But they're just watching this poor bastard get annihilated on the ground. Yeah, Mark's like, it's the toys! Baby Oopsie Daisy comes out and stabs this fucking guy in the dick three times. I could not believe that actually happened because she was walking out. I was like, is she about to stab? She did. Oopsie. 
and st- and just fucking start stabbing him in the dick <laughs> with this ceremonial knife. Here's the thing. I would rather get, like, just blown apart, like, in one shot than have to be sit there and just picked apart by small, teethed creatures. <laughs> this, it's like being eaten by compies. Like, oh, my God, dude. It's This scene is great. I don't know. It's very disturbing to me yeah. like it's cr- yeah. they do a really good job it's creepy as fuck these fucking things killing this dude <laughs> his toys annihilate him one chews throat out they're, sta- yeah. they're slashing at his chest he's getting stabbed in the fucking manhood oh yeah r.i.p charnetsky well I, f- I feel like the worst part of it all is once he's dead and fucking you know it's over with oopsie daisy fucking carries him head first down a flight of stairs towards that fucking uh, spot where the other guy was left and she's calling him fat the whole time yeah she's like you moby fucking dick <laughs> yeah and she's like pulling him and i'm like okay Okay, so this little doll that's like a foot tall has like the strength of, I don't know, at least fucking three dudes because she's pulling this fucking giant man across the... She's not as strong as Angry Mark, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> uh, yeah, she drags... It, it's very, it reminded me of uh, Evil Dead 2 when his hand is dragging him across the fucking kitchen. Um, oh, yeah. I love that scene. Yeah, and then she drags him over to the place where Hess died and uh, she draws a pentagram around him, but... With a crayon, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> If you look closely, if you look closely, the pentagram is already drawn, and the puppet is just tracing over where the line is. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You can even see the puppeteer behind the fucking puppet. Yeah, it's so good. It's like, oh, that is some B-movie charm right there. There's definitely a bit of that in this film, because I feel like when uh, Cherneski is getting killed, you can kind of see the puppeteer's arm, like, by the side of his fucking uh, gut. Dude, it's so cozy, though. Yeah, it's fine. I love it. No, yeah. It, it's so, it doesn't like... doesn't ruin the experience. No, no, I think it enhances it a little bit, in my opinion. That's kind of why a movie like I like a movie like Hobgoblins, which I bring up every now and then, is so funny, because you're like, you're just rubbing dolls on people's faces. Like, Ah, oh, that movie, that movie is fucking bad, though. It's, it's rough, that one. It's bad, but it's amusing. Yeah, when you're watching the MST3K of it. That is the only version you should watch. What the hell's wrong with you? You don't watch anything else. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch Manos without commentary. Well, well, like I owned it, and then I like bought the Vinegar Syndrome one, the D- the Blu-ray that came out. It looks great. I mean, it's just not. It's okay. Like I'd put it on for background, but like I don't know. It's yeah. It's it's not that great. Well, and you, and you know, while this fucking baby doll is dragging this fucking poor bastard around this warehouse. God, it, had, it must have taken this poor thing like ten or fifteen minutes. Mark and fucking Judith are are still trying to come up with a plan. And uh, Mark's like, what the hell are we going to do? How the hell are we going to get out of here? And then randomly, this fucking girl. Roach from People on the Stairs shows up. Yeah, she comes out of a fucking air vent. Yeah, one of the four non-blondes comes out of the fucking air vent. I Immediately, I was like, oh, she's from People on the Stairs. Yeah, what's going on? She's like, hi, I'm here to tell you all about the plot. Ready? Here we go. Uh, evil toys. There's a demon. Um, we're all in trouble. We're haunted. There's ghosts. There's demons. Demonic Toys, registered trademark, Full Moon Productions, Charles Band. And then Mark also drops this nugget where he's like, I guess he just knows this from, like, delivering the Charneski every night, the chicken order. He's like, yeah, you know, those shutters aren't going to open till morning. We're kind of locked in here. Yeah, I mean, it's well established that he, like, goes and visits Charneski. Like, this fucking fat man eats ch- fried chicken every night at 12 o'clock. Atkins diet, man. <laughs> If I anything about those baby boomers who smoked and drank themselves, they lived to 110, so... Dude, he's got some of those Atkins peanut butter cups in his fucking drawer. <laughs> Next to his scotch. Yeah. He dips the Reese's peanut butter cup in his scotch and takes a bite. Oh, yeah. He takes a big fucking swig of that Bushmills while he's eating <laughs> his chicken before. I-, I can't help but sit there and think this fucking... You know, it's one of the ultimate tropes in fucking movies, though, this goddamn air vent stuff. And you're looking at this air vent, this fucking, uh, this teenager comes out of it, and I'm like, okay, you can maybe fit one person in there. Nope, it's big enough for two full people at sh- who are standing shoulder to shoulder. With elbow room. Yeah, with elbow room. Well, it's magic, because she comes out of it, and it's just about as big as she is. Right. And then later, which we'll get to when her and Mark go up, it's like double wide. It's the machinations of John Hurt, okay? it's He's messing with reality. He's like the Blair Witch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. You got Radagast and Gandalf here involved, you know, <laughs> if we're going for the Lord of the Rings references, or, you know, Charneski and, you know, Gunner, you know, take your pick. The necromancer returns, dude. That girl, that girl has been doing battle with John Hurt for decades. I mean, who's who's the fucking uh, Balrog in this situation? Though? Ooh. Baldwin? <laughs> no. Baldwin's Boromir. Didn't we establish that? Yes, I think we yeah. did. I think we did. I don't know who the Balrog is. We'll think about it. 
We'll think of Maybe we haven't met him yet. No, we. I don't think we've met him yet. I think the closest we've come is like the Dark Lord from Howard the Duck. Oh, God, that fucking... We don't talk about him anymore. Or or the Zoa Lord. Maybe he is. Maybe. Yeah, the Zoanoids. David Gale's the Balrog. Maybe he was one of the mosquitoes. It's possible. I don't know. We'll get there. The, the, the book of lore is not yet written, okay? <laughs> it is being written. <laughs> Call out my name, Bastion. S- speaking of deep lore... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, Anne is this little uh, this girl who pops out of the fucking vent who gives us all these details. Her and Mark eventually split off and go into the vents, uh, and uh, uh, Judith takes her fucking prisoner. There, well, there's a there's a spot I just want to bring up real quick because it's our first instance of stop motion um, with the, the letter blocks because Mark's like, what the fuck's going on here, man? Oh, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> they... First they fall and they go, believe. Yeah, they say believe, and it, they're just done really well. I just wanted to point that out. No, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And they say believe, and they're like, what do you want us to do? And he's like, die. And he's like, who do you want to die? You. Oh, no. What a dumb question, Mark. What do you mean, who do you want to die? What Like, what was he expecting? Like, the blocks to be like, John F. Kennedy. Like, <laughs> we haven't really talked about it yet, because it kind of becomes more apparent in this dollhouse scene. But you do see the, the brown-haired kid fucking from Children of the Corn, uh, appear in this fucking warehouse kind of right after Hess is killed with these green eyes and this holy shit bad fucking dubbing of this, like, demonic voice they did over this kid's... Ooh, my God. Oh, it, and it wouldn't be so noticeable if this demon weren't so fucking chatty, but, man, he wants to talk all live long day. Well, he's been in prison for 66 <laughs> years. He's bored. <laughs> he just wants to solve yeah, conversation yeah. out of someone. He's just like, well, that's why he's dragging this out, right? Because he just wants a, he just wants a conversational piece. But, like, but it's, but it's not even, like, it's, it's very... It, it almost approaches small talkiness with how he approaches it. He's like, hello, I'm a demon. How is your day? The weather is fine. Uh, here's a curse. <laughs> right. Because she gets sucked into the fucking dollhouse somehow. Yeah, well, the demon possesses Lincoln, and then he's like, you're going to die or whatever, and then turns into right. the kid again. She sees the kid from the, from her dream, and then that's when uh, Mark and Anne go yeah. up into the vents, and then she's, like, chilling out, and uh, Lincoln ends up, letting himself out of the handcuffs with like a little knife. Right. And then and then Judith like wakes up cuz she like was spacing out and the dollhouse is calling to her and then she gets like sucked into the dollhouse. I like when she asks she's like sees this kid demon she's like, "Where are we?" and he's like shaking his wine glass and he's like, "In the dollhouse." We're <laughs> It's just I I don't know the visuals of the kid with the wine glass because he's like he's They're like so funny I can be any form I want and he turns into like a fucking like demon zombie monster yeah and then he turns into Matt but like the, the way this demon is is portrayed he's very like mm, he's like a snooty wealthy guy like the way his acting is he's like mm, yeah yes we're in the dollhouse what a stupid question like well, I I actually thought that him transforming into Matt was kind of fucked up because he's like yeah, zombified yeah. a little bit like all like you know pale white and this huge bloody mess on his chest like oh hello judith but then judith is like she does this weird thing every time this demon who she knows is a demon who she watched transform is turns her man she like puts her arms up she's like no man i'm like you know it's not him stop asking for a hug i can't get mad about that like dude to be fair because it's like you're basically seeing your dead husband for lack of a better term like yeah and and he did just get shot like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, he, I think that's a powerful thing, though, yeah. because, like, I don't know. I mean, that would fuck if, with you. Oh, yeah. If somebody passed away that you was like really dear to you, especially 20 minutes ago, but like uh, just appearing in front of you, like all fucking dead. Oh, I'm sp- I, and I'm specifically referencing her acting. This is where it starts getting a little. Hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, OK, yeah, sure. Yeah, because she's like, <laughs> but I, I get where she's coming from. And uh, he explains what we were we we kind of hinted at earlier, but that he this is the second time he's tried to be born, and sixty six years ago on Halloween night, he was almost born. Trick or trash, TM. This is this is a strange origin story. Yeah, these these fucking Satanists. Uh, <laughs> I kind of love this fucking part, dude. I do too because it comes out of left field and it's. Everything about it is so casual. <laughs> it's like a Rosemary's Baby kind of situation where this woman 
gives birth to this fucking deformed, like, demonic baby. But there's no, there's no gravitas to the situation. Like, remember how, like, the beginning, the beginning of the, the Evil Dead reboot is, like, fucking intense, and there's cursing and violence and blood and shit. And, like, this is, like, all right, keep pushing, keep pushing. Little guy gonna make it? No. It's <laughs> so strange because, like, so the demon child is, like, uh, I need a body. I want your body that's inside your body. And he's like, "Let me tell you a little story." <laughs> and they flash back, and it's just for. for I just want to. I just want to call out this elephant in the room because, um, sixty six years. Yeah. This demon. This demon is so. It's so specific, right? And this demon's complaining about it the whole movie. He's like, "I've been trapped in there for sixty six years," and it's like number of the beast, Joe, neighbor of the beast, definitely. <laughs> but but it's just like I don't know. There's demons in other parts of the world that have been trapped for like thousands of years, right? Oh, yeah. And he's like, man, I was really cranky underneath the floorboards of this toy warehouse for right. 66 years well, trapped in this body. Yeah, like less than a century. Ooh. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Like, oh, you like another demon be like, what are you, a fucking pussy or something? Well, right, yeah. Yeah, but I feel like Pazuzu would be like, you fucking bitch, shut up. Like, <laughs> Well, the whole thing is that like he comes out stillborn and it's, uh, you know, the mother dies, but it's like, a, I, I'm assuming the parents are just an older couple. Well, you, it's not really clear. It doesn't matter. But uh, these kids come to the fucking door to trick or treat, and the woman's like, "I have something better than candy." <laughs> <laughs> she just hands them this fucking bundle. These kids don't look at it like, "Oh, okay, cool." Here's a demon fetus. He's a. It's, it's like a seed, and you gotta plant them and make sure he grows up big and strong. And this kid's like, "Wow, old lady, thank you. This is great." And they leave with this fucking bundle of thank, shit. Thank you for this ominous package of, of, of moist grossness. Well, then they go to where the, the construction site is where this uh, fucking toy factory is going to be built. And they finally look at it and like, ah! <laughs> and they, they throw it behind him into a ditch. They, 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 they Luke Skywalker this fucking thing and just throw it behind him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> This little demon motherfucker gets Luke Skywalker into a hole. And it just, it, it bounces and makes a squelch noise, like, and it, Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and it just fucking sits there, and it cuts back, and he's like, and I've been here ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for 60, that's, and that's how I've been here for 66 years. That's my origin story. <laughs> Some kid threw me over his shoulder into a fucking ditch. <laughs> so then he goes to uh, Judith. She's like, so what do you want to do with me? And he's like, you know, well, I want I want to take your baby and become your baby. And, uh, you know, then when I'm born, uh, you'll die and I'll be, uh, you know, I'll be on the earth. And he goes, he goes, I'm going to come to you in my true form and do the nasty. <laughs> The way that this demon describes all these things to her, like, it goes from, like, fucking so silly and ludicrous to, like, really bone-chilling. Yeah. Like, yeah. later, I'm going to I'm gonna bring something up, uh, some of his dialogue, but he's like, he's like, yeah, and then I'm going to crawl on top of you and do the nasty. And he's, like, saying this as a kid. It's fucking weird. Yeah, it's coming out of a 10-year-old's mouth. And he has very, 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 very large front teeth, by the way. Because he's a child and like he's just awkward growing phases, but like you see that visual and he's like, "Do the nasty." You're like, "Watch your mouth!" Oh, stop that, you! Calling your parents. He he also mentions that he's going to accelerate the pregnancy so that she'll give birth in the morning. Right. Right. But she'll die, of course. I know, but that all of that is so disturbing to me that like anything with like rapid birth birth growth. No, it's fucked up. Oh my god, that's body. That's that's some good old body horror right there. This isn't some like Dragon Ball Super shit where Beerus snaps his fucking fingers and Whis just like fucking swings his wand and then Bulma has a baby. No, this thing is like expanding in her stomach. I I didn't know I. I haven't gotten to that part in Super yet. <laughs> well, it happens. Oops. Coming from the guy who hates fucking spoilers, just ruin them for you. It's, yeah, it's fine, because I think I know more about what happens that series later anyway. I feel like that was not, was a pretty light spoiler to me. I just, I just didn't know that show got to those, that level of weird. I did. So then, yeah, she comes out, out of the dollhouse, and like we were kind of talking about, Lincoln's escaped. And uh, meanwhile, Mark and Anne have kind of made it through the air vent, or, or, or just about to make it through, and then here comes our fucking little friends after him. <laughs> Baby Oopsie Daisy's there, singing. Yeah, this is the part when the robot shoots Anne in the fucking elbow that Connor was referring <laughs> to earlier. 
Oh my god, it's an awesome effect. Like it's it looked like a fucking RoboCop squib. Like she gets hit in the elbow and like Oh, it was great. A piece of her clothes just like blasts away and there's just this crater in her arm. I'm like that would be incapacitating. Oh, she wouldn't she wouldn't keep going. She'd fucking just crumble on that arm. Yeah, oh my god, that looks like it was awesome. And that that for some, I love that kind of squib effect because it just looks so nasty, and especially when it gets everywhere in oh, that yeah. kind of small space, it just looks so effective. The funniest part about that whole scene to me is like once he's a, once the toys start attacking him, fucking Mark just like knocks one of them over the robot, and it's just like can't yeah. do anything. <laughs> he just so, knocks it onto it, fucking smacks. He's like backhands. He's like, Poop. I'm just sitting here thinking like, did Oopsie Daisy have to go over to this fucking robot and like sit it up straight to get it going again? <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> she had to have. <laughs> ah shit. I gotta pick you up again. She has a strength of ten men. It's fine. I want to see Oopsie Daisy versus fucking Charles Lee Ray. That's what I want to see. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I think Oopsie Daisy's stronger. I don't think so. I, I I don't think so, but it would be interesting. I think Charles Lee Ray, like Charles Lee Chuck, Ray. Yeah, Jesus just call him Christ! Chuck. I don't know why I'm calling him Charles Lee Ray. But <laughs> I, we're being so formal. Charles. Oh God, help me. Charles, come and play hide and seek. No, Chucky. Uh, I think would beat Boo. Be, be, blah, blah, blah. I think would beat uh, baby Oopsie Daisy's ass. He's just bigger than she is. Yeah, but she could like pick him up with a scruff and throw him off a cliff. Like- I mean, based on what happens to that to Oopsie Daisy by the end of this film, I think Chucky's got her beat as far as like uh, the damage that's come to his body and he survived. It's almost identical to the way Chucky dies in the original movie. Oh, you don't you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> So they get out of this fucking air vent, and they're trying to get into the, the fucking security room to uh, to open the gate, essentially. So they, they go, they're looking at the security console, and right as they're about to do it, the fucking robot shoots the lasers into this thing. Like, rapid fucking fire. It must have shoot the security console about a hundred times in the matter of, like, six seconds. Oh, yeah, and doesn't hit either of them. No, just blows the co- blows the console to fucking shit. He's like, "Ah, oh, it's blown. We're fucked. We're fucked. Game over, man." And then Mark Mark gets the fucking shotgun out of the the the, the cabinet, and uh, actually before that, first he grabs his fucking bug spray and he lights a lighter and he fucking flame throws the shit out of the robot and Oopsie Daisy. Yeah, so that so that's Child's Play Mark One. Oh yeah, and then Oopsie Daisy goes, "Ah, you're fucking up my makeup." <laughs> She's like. <laughs> She's like, oh, you're getting me so hot, yeah. you prick. Then he goes into the weapons locker and pulls the shotgun out. And me, uh, and stands in the stupidest fucking spot possible, <laughs> right by the window. And this jack-in-the-box fucking just jumps through the fucking glass and starts biting the shit out of her. Oh, no, it attacks uh, Mark. She's by the vent. She gets it first, right in the face. Yeah, and then she rips it off, and then it's on Mark. And then he fucking rips, he, he he basically, like, rips it out of the jack-in-the-box and, like, rips the fucking rattle part off. Rips and, its tail off. Yeah, and this fucking thing is just bleeding, like, green goo all over this place. Slopping all over the floor like a fucking sol- wet salami. Then, then, oopsie-daisy jumps out of the fucking air vent. Don't look now and start stabbing this chick in the fucking eye with a needle no with a pen is it a pen i thought it was yeah. a knife at first yeah i think it's a pen but she's just she's on her face just poke 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 dude this look fucking brutal oh yeah stabs her to death right in the fucking eye she gave her several several involuntary lobotomies it looks great it's great if you look at that eye, not only does it look bloody and disgusting, it looks infected like nobody's business. Oh, yeah, it's gross. Also, like you're saying, like, oopsie-daisy is melted. Like, we have to paint a little bit more of a picture for that. Because, like, all these demonic toys have, like, weird fucking green blood, like I was kind of saying yeah. with the jack-in-the-box. Green so, eyes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so the oopsie-daisy where its face is burned away is all this, like, disgusting uh, green goop. I will, I will say the use of green in this movie is very interesting because it is, like... It is very heavily associated with everything, that, like, demonic. Um, and even, like, actually, um, Judith has, like, rock-solid green eyes in some of the shots in this movie, too. Mm-hmm. And the demon kid, the the kid who plays, like, the uh, the kid version yeah, of the demon yeah. has green contacts in, too. And then Jack's blood is green as well. Everybody's blood is green. So one other thing I did just remember we forgot to mention because it comes up here. There are these three fucking, uh, I don't know what they are, phantoms or some shit on tricycles? This is one of the most bizarre, this is actually when I was kind of starting to really go from like, this is okay to like, I like this. Because the demonic toys have these watchdogs 
Essentially, there's these three little girls with gas masks who ride on tricycles. And, like, they're basically just designed to... Dude, it looks creepy. D d ...just to alert the, this demon of someone's presence. They can't hurt you, and they don't really have a physical body. Um, but they're creepy as shit. They're just designed to ride around this fucking warehouse and go, person. Right, and that's why I say that we forgot to mention is because the reason why Mark and Anne kind of rush through this air vent is while they're dilly-dallying, the, the tricycle has come down and just, like, stop right below them and point up. It's kind of reminiscent of the, the Body Snatchers remake from the 80s. But this also comes up a, a, in a little bit, too, because it's like the demon does possession, possesses the, wait, possesses the toys, which kill people. Then he possesses people sometimes, and then he can create, like, illusions. Right, and that's kind of like, like you just said, Joe, it's coming up soon, because Mark, he goes, you know, basically with the shotgun now, he's going to the warehouse, I'm assuming to get, you know, help of some kind. Wait, hold on a second. Before that, he fucking blows Jack's fucking head off. Um, so he, he blows Jack's head off with the fucking shotgun, kills his ass, and then goes to kill baby Oopsie Daisy, but she runs out. <laughs> and she comes out and goes, miss me! Yeah, <laughs> see ya! <laughs> you know what? If anything, Oopsie Daisy fucking warmed up to me by the end of this film. <laughs> <laughs> I love Oopsie. Oops! Uh, oh, whoops, parlez-vous? Do you want to see my butt, sir? <laughs> But at least this time it's oopsie daisy. Just like you know, do the mental uh, picture on oh, that one. Oh Jesus! And then the fucking doll bends over and takes a shit. <laughs> <laughs> oopsie daisy. Mark, after he blows away this jack in the box, he's running around the warehouse to try to get help or something. I'm not really sure what his fucking plan is. And these this tricyclist people start going towards him. And Anne says, you know, oh, you know, it's the demon makes them. And you know, as long as you don't think they're real, they won't hurt you. So he's like, they're not real. They're not real. And uh, it, the the main one disappears, so he's like, okay, I'm good to go. Wrong. Yes, it is. Because th this scene is fucking creepy, I'm sorry. It is pretty creepy. Because this little girl, like this blonde-haired girl in, in like a sundress, is standing there looking at him, and he's like perplexed. And then it cuts back to Mark, and it cuts back to her, and now she's like an adult. In the same dress. Yeah, and then it cuts back to Mark, cuts back to her, and guess what? It's Miss July. Fucking tits out, Cub Scout. What, what, are you, what are you, movie? What are you trying to say here? It was tr what it, it was trying to say. Boob quota is what it was trying to say. Brings a tear to your eye, don't it? My boobs, I'm talking about, by the way, my butt too. Well, and if it wasn't creepy enough, after that, it it it, it turns into fucking Anne with the eye missing. Oh yeah, sure does. And he like almost throws up. I do like that touch. Actually, I do like everything around Mark's uh, physical condition in this movie because he's always. Like, he's covered in slime, blood, sweat, vomit, like, everything. He's filthy by the end of this fucking movie. Yeah, he's also having, like, an episode the whole time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's questioning his sanity <laughs> he's a, the entire time. He's a he's a ball of anxiety the entire film. He's an H.P. Lovecraft protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> I have gone mad. I, I've been seeing things. I need my morphine to balance the fuck out here. I have to go to Miskatonic for some reason. He's got to get back to that chicken mobile to get his piece. He's got to smoke a little Mary Jane. <laughs> he sure does. He's got to fucking chill out. <laughs> he's got to mellow out, get his head together. The fucking, the fucking Popeye theme plays when he smokes it. <laughs> well, he's freaking out seeing these images. He has the shotgun, and like as he's trying to collect himself, Lincoln fucking... Uh, bombards him and fucking like pushes him, him into some crates. To be fair, at this point, like I, I mean, I've seen this movie a bunch, but like I always forget about him. Yeah, no, it, it's well done. The movie does a good job of being like he's gone and then completely forgetting about him with like all the wacky shit that's going on. This movie is very busy and it does a lot with little. Is something I was gonna say. Oh yeah, it's. it's um, but yeah, he comes out left field and fucking body checks Mark into a bunch of boxes, which is a recurring stunt in this movie, and I like it. That's yeah, a toy factory, sure, why not? It works every time for some reason. Mark is the fucking box king, dude. He always lands ass first into some empty <laughs> box. <laughs> he sure what, does. What was that thing called? Video Zone or something? Uh, yeah, Video Zone. In Video Zone, he was talking about that stunt in particular. Oh, no, it was a different one. I'll come back to it later. But basically, there's a point where he's getting thrown into boxes, and he was talking about how they hooked him up on a fucking wire and flung him. He's like, yeah, it kind of felt like I was flying. It's funny when you when you see stuff like that, because like, I just thought he flew backwards. He just threw him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Or, or just like jumped backwards. Like, I didn't realize that a wire was needed to do that. Specifically kind of for a scene tossing. coming up. I don't know if he had a wire on him this time. But I could I could see it. Especially because it doesn't look it doesn't look like he got tossed very far. But I guess they wanted it to look yes. hard. So yeah. I guess yeah. Well, Lincoln he grabs the shotgun. He's like, yeah, now I got a shotgun. Ho ho ho. 
Uh, no, he doesn't say that. That would have been Chernesky when he, you know, he was Santa Claus in that other movie. <laughs> Chernesky goes crazy because he's a drunk fucking mall Santa. Santa Slay 3. Doesn't he, uh, does, doesn't Lincoln put a fucking bullet in Mark's shoulder, No, too? he doesn't shoot him. He just, he, he goes on some fucking rant about how the voices in my head told me to do it. Yeah, he's like, he's like, if I'm gonna blow your fucking head off, I'm gonna blow your fucking head off. I'm an arms dealer and I'm crazy. I don't know that we needed that additional wrinkle where he's also insane. I think that we, we had enough that he was just a scumbag. You didn't, you didn't need that, that extra layer of character development for Lincoln the thug? <laughs> Well, he's already a, he's already fucking batshit, and then I think what's making him crazy is that he keeps getting possessed by the demon. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know who I am anymore. Like, like are the voices in his head literally the demon talking to him in his head? Yeah, I, I think so, because the demon comes through him at this point, and he starts like singing to to Mark, and then. Uh, Judith fucking pops this motherfucker right in his forehead. Oh, it's a beautiful squib. It's it's gross and it's pasty and it goes everywhere. And you're like, damn, there he goes. He, he goes down and then he's still talking. The demon's still like talking through his dead body. Yeah, he's going, shakuzi, shakuzi, <laughs> abracadabra, alakazam. <laughs> and then Mark summons the power of 10,000 men, picks up a shotgun and goes, <laughs> and takes one swing one swing, everybody, and decapitates Lincoln. He sure with does. The butt of this shotgun, and it's not a clean cut. This thing tears off Lincoln's neck, and blood and shit goes everywhere. I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh, it's glorious. Mark doesn't need Mark doesn't need weapons. His hands are weapons. He's got an untapped power. Do you think? And it comes out like in his rage. He could be the next Giver. It's possible. Oh, maybe he's got it inside him. He's a Saiyan. Is it a full moon tonight, though? I could be. We don't ever actually see it. It's full moon entertainment. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe it's always. Maybe it's always full moon in these movies. He's an automatic grill, gorilla man. It's like fucking Barovia. There's just the fucking moons out all the time. The people in these movies are always like, fucking full, goddamn full moon again? <laughs> full moon Jesus entertainment, Christ. DM. Charles Band's just on his roof with sunglasses on enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, and the producer just comes in like fucking... Dan Foreign from Mortal Kombat, and he's like, full moon. Oh, yeah, man. Charles bands up with John Hurt, like, hanging out. Like, wait till you see this one. Clinking glasses and joining the <laughs> stuff. Are you saying he's Ultron? I think Charles Band is the Ultron of the MDU. He's Ultron if he was J fucking five. It's like the, the poorly put together Ultron. I think so. He He's like, he's like trying to make a per, he's like trying to make a, a different world, but it's all low budget. Horror movies? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm getting at, Joe. I'm with it. Sign me up for that. I mean, I love J5. You know, that's not necessarily a knock against <laughs> Charles Band. You know, let's be real. J5! My nelly! <laughs> Wait, Johnny 5 or J5? Uh, J5, man. J5! Come on, J5. I want a buddy cop movie with J5 and Johnny 5. I'd watch it. Sign me the fuck up. That'd be good. Give it to me. Robert Cop 3. So then, uh, af after this decapitation, all of the fucking toys, like, just very similar to the end of the movie toys with Robin Williams, uh, they just start attacking them, so they start unloading. Yeah, they, they have a full-on uh, Woody Harrelson, Tallahassee uh, shootout. Oh, yeah. Stuck in that little fucking attraction in a zombie land. Uh, and they just start, like, you know, shooting all the toys. And, like, this is, I love this. This is, like, from a special effects perspective, like, if you're on that career, you're like, all right, now we get to blow up a bunch of shit. <laughs> yeah. They end up blowing away the robot. He's dead. Um, they, they shoot Oopsie Daisy's arm off at first. Again, this is so Chucky, like, this is yeah. how Chucky dies. <laughs> Chucky gets lit on fire, gets one of his arms shot off, then gets its head shot off, and then his head dies. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> the only thing missing was Chris Sarandon. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna believe this, you know. Yeah, but who's gonna believe me? God, I would have loved to see fucking Oopsie Daisy like trying to stab Mark under the fucking seat in the chicken mobile. Kill him, strangle him. <laughs> Oops, I shit my pants. Keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> he, sh he shits on him. Well, I meant Oopsie Daisy, yeah. but sure, Mark too. Why not? What the yeah. hell? <laughs> Mark shits on the toy. Deal with that, Oopsie Daisy. Ah, you disgusting bastard. <laughs> he wipes his ass with the doll. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, no, but the, the doll wipes its ass with him because this fucking teddy bear doll just grows into a full-sized werewolf and starts pummeling him. Yes, teddy bear is like, by the way, I'm a lycanthorpe. Yeah, they fucking, they fucking shoot this thing and it falls behind some boxes and then morphs into a gigantic mutant bear monster. 
It's amazing. It's, it's, it's a zoonoid, okay? Well, not hold on. Not before he blows away Oopsie Daisy's fucking literal head. Because she starts quipping. She's like, I'm not dead. Ah. Right after the head dies, that happens, yeah. <laughs> Death is but a door. Time is but a window. Oopsie Daisy will be back. I'll be back in the sequel. Yeah, okay, okay, so here's the thing. So, so, so... Linda Cook passed away, so she couldn't. I, 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 I want to say that the fucking demonic toys came out before 2012, demonic toys two, but whatever, for whatever reason, they gave Baby Oopsie Daisy this stupid fucking voice that sounds like this. Now Oopsie Daisy sounds like this, and it's like, oh no, she's she's meatwad. Yeah, and it's just not doesn't have the same impact, man, because like Oopsie Daisy here is voice is like creepy in this. I'm not gonna lie though, if Oopsie Daisy sounded like Meatwad and they just had someone in there as Carl, like, oh not today, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Getting killed by a fucking baby doll. I'm gonna stab you in the, I'm gonna stab you in the duck, alright? Get out of my pool, fry man. It just cheapens it for me. Anyway, back to this one, because this is the good one. So yeah, they this thing turns into a full fucking werewolf, um, and chases down Mark, who has basically now been chosen as this thing's nemesis. Like speaking of werewolves, Christ, we could have really used Sigvaldson in this fucking movie. Oh yeah, man, with his axe. Fucking axe that bear. He just he 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 stops by real quick. He's like, I have things to do, but here. <laughs> Take this. Stab it. Take this. Please give it back. I have places to go. Yeah, he gives him a fucking saber. Put it back into the movie theater wall when you're done, please. <laughs> I have to get to an audience. I gotta go look at pictures of myself. The paintings. You guys can't see this, and the people listening at home can't see this, but I just did a rapid blink. Because uh, I just was reminded of the fact that as this is all going on, uh, a box opens. Sure does. My favorite part of the movie. <laughs> My least favorite part of the movie. Ah. <laughs> How dare you? This fucking wood soldier crawls out of this fucking box. I think it's I think it's fine. It looks good. I just hate this plot point so much. I th- I like this plot point. I love it and I was waiting for it because they they made it a point to not reference who this other child was in the dream the whole time until the end. And then as soon as this thing pops up I'm like I see what you're doing and I like it. Um also more David Allen stop motion and it looks fantastic. Oh yeah, the stop motion looks incredible. Oh, it's be- oh, it's so fluid. Oh my god. Looks God. wonderful. Um, and just I love the way this pup is designed because it's right out of fucking Babes in Toyland. Uh, it's awesome looking. And as soon as he trots off, I was like, all right, you're my favorite character in the movie. But he kind of like that happens. And then this whole shootout thing happens because at some point, like when he wakes up, like fucking this demon who is as of yet unnamed uh, is just chilling in his pentagram with like blood everywhere and like more demonic toys. And it's like a long panning shot mm-hmm. of him. Well, then, then there's like the whole bear chase. So like, yeah, the bear is chase the bear is chasing, um, Tracy or Judith rather through like the back, some back room and like, um, she like locks the door and, and this fucking thing's like bursting through the door. And then like the little soldier guy like lets her out through another door um and then she runs into matt again and he like rips his fucking eyes out and she faints and then oh my god yeah that was fucked up that effect is really cool when he pulls his fucking eyes it out it was fucking great because he says something like i see you or some shit and he literally rips him out yeah he's like he's like oh you're always beautiful in my eyes or some shit. right yeah yeah and then he fucking rips his eyes out and then he goes and then he goes liberate me <laughs> <laughs> and then he and then he fucks someone to death. No, oh happen. Jesus Christ! <laughs> he tries to. Well, yeah, one of them. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. So he drags her off and fucking ties her to the pen, uh, the pentagram. And then demon gets chatty again. Yeah, he sure does. He fuck. He's like, let me slip into something more comfortable to fuck you with, and then turns into an adult <laughs> instead of fucking her as a child. Or turn into rump. Like, let's be real. Those were the only <laughs> options. <laughs> well, we fucked in the shower last night for six hours. Give me the goddamn baby. <laughs> now give me your baby. Let me be your baby. <laughs> The baby John. Be my, be my baby. With whole, this whole, like, I need a body thing, it's like, you have one. You very clearly have one. That you can turn into at will, it seems. Why do you need a new one? Well, instead, he's fucking Voldemort monologuing for so long, it doesn't fucking pan out. Yeah. No. Which, I'm, you know, not that I want to see that happen. I'm just saying, like, you know, classic villain fuck uppery. I don't think he's corporeal, because, like, I don't think you can... Ah, see, here's the weird thing, right? He... Ha- to, he wants to be reborn 
and in doing so needs to fuck her? Yeah, I don't understand why he needs to if she's already pregnant. Yeah, which which would imply physical properties, and then he gets physically damaged by actual objects. Like, I don't understand why he needs a body. He has one. What's kind of like Boogity? It's like Mr. Boogity. This guy's supposed to be some (laughs) fucking ghost, and they're shooting mothballs at him and getting sucked up by a vacuum. Yeah, and he gets beaten by a fucking vacuum. (laughs) The only thing that really hurts him, though, is the other kid. Sure. Uh, because, because... Judith is the one who does the killing. Yeah. Work. Yeah, she gets that saber from S- Sig Valtzen. She's got that special saber. Yeah, but, the, like, something happens to him, and the saber stays in the real world. Um, But we'll get to that in a moment. So, yeah, he has her in the pentagram, and he's, like, he's doing his whole fucking time to do the nasty speech. Also, I want to comment on, like, what he looks like here, because he looks pretty fucking intimidating. He He's, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, he, he he's, like, an adult, and he has this, like, demonic, like... Uh, when when he when you see the fetus of what this guy could have been the 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 stillbirth he had like these horns and shit coming off his head he had a bit of like a a reddish yellow green kind of complexion he looked like the little monsters from subspecies yes and that's what he kind of looks like here but fully grown with this like dark robe on with his doomsday cloak <laughs> yeah he also repeats the line from earlier that he's gonna do the nasty with her oh he's doing the nasty all over there he's got a line though that. Is like I said before, like that's so silly to be like, now I'm gonna crawl on top of you and do the nasty. But then he has this bone chilling ass line that's like, I'm going to eat the soul of your baby and take the shell of its body for my own. Yeah, it's creepy as fuck. Yeah, he gets like yeah. dead serious when he says that. Can you can you choose your tone, please? Sir? <laughs> yeah, he's like, are you, are you kooky or what? Are you kooky or are you scary? Well, while he's monologuing, uh, Mark gets into the chicken mobile and he runs this fucking werewolf over. <laughs> And then I guess he's like ready to just leave, and then he hears Judy screaming, so he's like, fuck that. He, I don't know how he accomplishes this, but he shoots this fucking chicken truck, and it explodes, <laughs> and just uh, turns this werewolf into dust. Well, this is what happens. <laughs> he rams the werewolf into a wall yeah. with the car, um, and then he shoots the gas tank with the shotgun, uh, so it's okay. pouring over the place, and then he, um... And then he throws a fucking Molotov cocktail at the fucking car, and it explodes. I think he lights a teddy he lights a teddy bear on fire and throws it at the fucking car, and it explodes, killing this werewolf. Did he grab Charneski's fucking bottle from the security <laughs> office? <laughs> Probably. This is for you, Charneski, R.I.P., <laughs> Charnetsky's like, it's okay, I've ascended. I am now Charnetsky the Grey. Thanks for killing that fucking werebear for me, buddy. The one who broke my knee. Now get me some chicken. He's like that elder god-like character who's like always pestering Gunner, and Gunner just like can't tell him to fuck <laughs> off. Because <laughs> he's one of him. Yeah. Like he's one of the same like race or like uh, being. He's technically my co-worker. I can't be mean to him. Like fucking Gunner's up there, you know, trying to chat on a couple on a comporial hamburger and he's got this fucking Charvinsky guy in his ear <laughs> fucking chewing on a chicken leg. He appears in a puff of smoke and drops like a giant tray of chicken on the table in front of him. <laughs> hey, you doing there, Gunner? Oh, man, you think they're eating wings watching the fucking Cubs game? Yeah, yeah exactly. I brought some more chunky chicken. I didn't invite you here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody asked you to come, Charnetsky. <laughs> How'd you find this place? I'm here, whether you like it or not. Pass the bush meals. Here we go. Uh, bud dry for me there, Charnetsky. <laughs> I'm gonna have a butterita or whatever the fuck they're called. Oh god! Oh those fucking those big giant. What is it? The uh, I can't remember they're called. But they're off. It's like it's like it's like Budweiser's version of a four loco or some shit. Yeah, it's one of those awful wine coolers that will make you drunk and then give you diabetes. <laughs> Charneski looks over to Gunner and he's just kind of looking a little perplexed with chicken grease all over his fingers and his face, and he goes, "Hey, uh, Gunner, what's with the lady?" Ah, you know, j- just ignore her. She's my on a- on and off again girlfriend, GVD. Oh, don't you, no, don't you boys want to watch the game or you want to get naked? Which is it? <laughs> Charnetsky starts, like, unbuttoning his shirt and Gunner just, like, coughs, like, uh, excuse me? <laughs> What's the matter, Gunner? I haven't gotten in a while. What are you doing? Take off your clothes, too? This isn't... <laughs> Don't be a quitter. <laughs> I can't see your penis. Lift it up. You, you too. Take it off. Now, Charneski, uh, she's punished at the moment. Uh, she had a little bit of a fling she's with the uh, Six Flags guy. <laughs> she's <laughs> She's been cast into a fucking stone and held there. God, she is like rump. 
The whole the rump references are coming fast and furious. She she's more like the gin. She's in that little ruby. Oh my god! Uh, now, now that we've now that we've invoked her name, I want to shout out to one of our listeners. Uh, good enough Apollo on Instagram. My message is <laughs> <laughs> you're next. Good enough Apollo. Yo, you now you spoke my name. I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh god! I invoked her. I hope she's not coming for me. Uh, we're all on her list. Uh, all right, don't look in the mirror. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be like sitting there trying to fall asleep at night. I'm just gonna hear this creaking, fucking rocking chair and this giggling in the corner. You ever see the changeling? It's kind of like that, except you're naked. <laughs> you just hear nails on your wall. She's like, eh. do, 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 do. "That's me getting banged." Oh my god. Well, okay. She just she stands above your bed at night and like in the moonlight just shakes her body and it sounds like this. Oh god. <laughs> God! That's her butt cheeks fucking whacking together. That's like that's what Charnetsky sounds like when he's chowing in on chicken. So it could be one or the other. Let's be real. Anyway, but we digress. <laughs> <laughs> so he blows up this chicken fucking mobile, and, and and he's rushing to try to help out Judith. But before he can get there, this little wooden fucking soldier just fucking shoots this demon in the eyeball, right in the eye. Oh, and then he goes over and he starts to use his little his little fucking saber and he cuts the the he cuts the bands that have uh, Judith tied down. And then he turns into the the kid, and then the the demon turns into the kid. And then they ha- and they have a piss poor fight. Yeah, but then they have they turn they both turn into their respective kid forms and then wrestle each other. You call it wrestling. I call it like it's like third grade. A fight's happening in the hallway, but not really. And then two grown adults come up and pick them by the collars and just like separate them, like. Except in this case, they, it stabs one with a saber through the chest. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to note too that like while while Children of the Corn Kid is is just like switching outfit nonstop throughout this entire film, the other kid, the blonde haired kid, is literally dressed like this tin sh- soldier. Yeah, with the fucking blue hat on and the re- you know the red fucking uh, uniform, those fucking square feet. He's like, I didn't get all those powers. Okay, I can only turn into one thing. He push the button on his back and he fucking walks into Barnaby and shit. Oh my god, R A T. But except this time it's B R A T. You know, be done the Brett. Be down the bread. <laughs> what is this? Uh, un- Uncle Gary Busey being invoked now? What, what, what are we trying to do? Oh, here? yeah. Maybe. Joey Ramone's coming. He's going to fucking beat the shit out of both of them. Start the goddamn fucking MDU apocalypse. <laughs> oh, my God. He kicks it off. Could be. The dawn of Busey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. As you guys are talking about, uh, he the little boy has the fucking saber that he brings in. And while he's, you know, you know getting into it with the demon boy... Judith stabs the other one through the fucking chest, and the demon disappears. He just dies. He fucks right off. This is like the end of Idle Hands. Yo, yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm fucking good. I'm, I'm out of here. He's like, oh, 66 years, poof, and then he's done. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, that is his ultimate defeat. There's no, like, I'm going to come back. There's no, like, jump scare thing. He's he's fucking dead. He's gone. Well, and the whole time, like, this movie's been playing out, when you cut back to the dream sequence and, um... It seems like these two supernatural entities have been had this like this ethereal stalemate, and it's been going on in like this form of cards, and they're playing war. Um, and it keeps having them throw down cards, and they keep saying war. And then finally, it shows the blonde kid throws in an ace. He's like, "Ace trumps king. I win." Um, and then like the evil demon kid stands up and he's like, "Fooey!" and he throws his cards on the ground. And then he loses in real life too. Gonna have to wait another 66 years to try this again. Oh, no! Another few decades! It's been 66 years since I was thrown into a construction site. (laughs) Since I was haphazardly thrown into a pile of shit. (laughs) (laughs) Haphazardly! (laughs) Like a sack of garbage. Well, after he disappears, the blonde-haired kid, he walks up to her and she's like, Who are you? He's like, I'm your unborn child. I'm your son. I'm because I'm 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 unborn. I'm still considered a spirit. So I came down from uh I came down from heaven to help you. I gotta go. I couldn't I couldn't uh bear seeing you get killed by the or get fucked by the demon thing. And I didn't want to be evil, so I I found a way. Well, kid, you wouldn't have been evil. You would have been dead. Um, that part is a little hokey. Yeah, well, it's it's just because the way it's written is really, and delivered, it's very... It's pretty bad. It's very like, let's wrap this up, shall we? Oh, yeah. Who are you? I'm your son. Bye! Bye. (laughs) Mark comes in, he's like, what the fuck happened? Who's that? See you in eight months. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. He's like, uh, 
I'll see you in eight months. And she's like, what's your name? He's like, I don't know. You didn't name me yet. Bye. I don't know. I'm not born yet, you dumb woman. Bye. I think I'll name him Charneski. <laughs> He's reincarnated in the kid. And that's how he gets his new body. That's how he, he's Charnetsky the Gray, the kid. <laughs> he turns to Gunner. He's like, it looks like I only got eight months with you this time, Gunner. Going back to Earth. Gunner's like, Gunner, Gunner's like, oh no, what a tragedy. All this time with my best friend. He just uh, turns the volume up on this ethereal TV they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Mark comes in and he's like, what happened? He's like, she's like, nothing. It was my son. And then she puts the wooden soldier down and it waves and then it just fades to credits. Yeah, it waves and walks off and then it just fades. Yeah, it's over. And that's it. So, where, what, what treat is this in our treat bag, fellas? Um, I'll go first. Um, this is a small bag of Sour Patch Kids. Ooh. Um, in that, uh, I feel like I would have really, really liked this when I was like 15. Um, I have my hand raised in the air, by the way. (laughs) Even younger than that, jeez. Um, yeah, like loved it as a kid, loved it as a teenager. Um, uh, but now, like, uh, some of it is kind of bad for me as an adult, but I still like it. So, um, it's rough around the edges, but this is a nice little gem, and I really appreciated it. And it was far better than I was expecting, considering my stance on like this kind of horror film. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this, and this was a nice little surprise. So, yeah, there's that. Um, this is like peanut M and M's for me. Ooh. Um, whereas if you put a bowl of it in front of me, I will eat the whole fucking bowl. <laughs> Each bag is a different full moon, you know, feature. Oh, oh yeah, full moon nugget, baby. This is the kind of movie that I, I live for. That's kind of like my lifeblood, right? Um, these, this is the kind of movie that, oddly enough, kind of like defines who I am. I know that sounds really cheesy, but like, it, it, it just. It resonates so like deeply with me. Um, it I loved it as a kid. I still love it now. Um, it's of course it's corny, but it's not. It's not ever so corny where you're like, this movie sucks. It's just like, oh, that's corny, but it's charming, and the effects are on point. I mean, we got Beekler here. We got David Allen here. I mean, we have two fantastic effects artists. Um, we got Full Moon. In their prime, right around right around here, like 19, 1990, like 89, 1990, 1992. That's, we're in that pocket right there. Um, the gore is great. The effects are great. The acting can be good to pretty poor, but it never dips down too much where I'm like, oh my god, that's fucking downright awful. Except for maybe at the end right there. So so yeah, I'm I'm popping these like fucking like fucking peanut M and M's, baby. Give me all of the movies like this. <laughs> um, it's delicious. Um, love it. I think this movie's gonna be like a Warhead to me. The Warhead candies. You know what? I love Warhead candies, but or or I guess I should say I love the idea of Warheads because every time I eat one of those motherfuckers, the first minute and a half <laughs> is just total torture for me until I get to that, that nice sweet spot in the middle. And uh, I, I was talking a little before we started recording to Joe about how, you know, I didn't hate this movie, but I didn't love it either. And, and the big crux of my argument is that I felt like the first, like, 15 minutes of this film were just, like, so fucking boring that I was ready for a nap. Um, and that and that's kind of where I make the Warhead comparison. Because, like, that beginning part of the war... You know, some people love Warheads. My girlfriend fucking loves them. You know, if you like sour and sweet, it's, it's like the perfect candy. But for me, I like... Again, like I said, I like the idea of sour and sweet, but I I just can't fucking handle it. So I like uh, the analogy, though. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, I get why the first 15 minutes exist. They have to, because the rest of the film can't really function without that setup. But uh, I feel like I would have enjoyed this a little better without the slow plotting intro. I want to get right to that sweet spot. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I like a lot of stuff about this movie. The effects are cool. Uh, I, I like the, the demonic toys, the titular de- demonic toys. And uh, most of the kills are pretty good. And uh, you know what? It wraps itself up in a interesting way, let's say. And uh, I kind of now want to see doll man versus demonic toys even though i've read it's pretty much just a clip movie yeah i think I, i'll leave it at that i actually agree about the opening of this movie i thought it was an awfully long and elaborate setup for a bunch of toys to kill people but after a while i kind of forgot forgot about it so this is one of those special things because like 
especially with full moon like like i said at the beginning um this is our first actual full moon movie and um there was a point when i was around like 12 13 and we were living in south jersey like temporarily and uh just for the summer and i just remember that summer like not being able to see my friends or do anything really and all i had I mean, I was at the video store anyway, normally, but like that's all I had um, that summer. And I would walk to the video store and I would just like rent a stack of tapes and fucking more than 50% of them were full moon flicks. <laughs> um, so that's another reason why this movie's so special to me. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I'll just going to add to that, Joe, because I feel like full moon is a company that if I wasn't doing this show and if I wasn't you know, a good friend of yours. I may never have even checked out this fucking movie, to be quite honest. <laughs> uh, so, you know, e- you know, even though it's not my favorite, I- I'm glad we watched it and had the experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was great to share that with you guys. And you know what? It opened my eyes to Oopsie Daisy. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And you found out about a whole bunch of other Full Moon titles too. <laughs> so I'm excited to kind of tackle those in the I, future. You know what? I, I was looking at Arcade, and it seems like the movie for fucking me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bad Channels is a good one too. There's a whole. Oh my god. There's a bunch of. Good well, ones. speaking of Bad Channels, apparently also is a part of fucking Doll Man versus Demonic Toys, and we didn't even talk about it. Well, no, there's a fucking character from it in it. The, the woman, the female lead, is in it. There you go, man. Fucking, I'm telling you, FMU. Doing it bef- way before Marvel. They got us beat even. Also, it's probably, a, it's probably a good point to mention that me and Sean both watched this on a streaming service called Tubi, which has an entire full moon category. Yes. Which we mentioned Tubi, I think, one other time in the past. Yeah, Tubi has like 11 billion movies and they're all free. <laughs> they're like, hey, watch this 15 second commercial. You're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not a bad service to look into. And no, that was not a paid plug. <laughs> I I have this on DVD and Blu-ray, but I dug out my tape specifically to because I wanted to watch the video zone at the end. Just kind of, I just kind of wanted to. You wanted the full full moon experience. I wanted the full effect again. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The full full moon moon. The full moon. The full full moon. I'm showing myself out after that. It's all right. I've made worse jokes. So that's it. That's Demonic Toys from 1992, directed by Peter Manugian. Hey, everybody. If you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcasts, and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. I mean, this is Halloween, the night when all the creepy things were supposed to stock the earth. It deals with demons, demon resurrection, and those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant, but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. It's Halloween, have you forgotten? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat.